Hey guys and welcome to another video on how to do a main bus properly, a, an addendum if you will. Um, after lots of testing through both myself and the, the Factorio community at large, um, we've had a look at the previous one that I showed which is the uh, read the lower belt and enable disable if greater than 5 on this belt. And basically what this does is you're testing to see if there's more than five, uh, if there's more than five items on this belt before allowing the floodgate to open. So basically, if this belt is full, then this belt can free flow. But the issue with that is that this is essentially testing to see whether it's doing its job and then allowing it to not do its job. So if this is a fully saturated line, then this will open itself up and make this a non-fully saturated line. So it can't tell the difference between items that have stopped on the belt or items that are moving on the belt, so when it's actually doing its job it decides to not do its job and fuck things up for you. So this shit. Let's go to my next little revelation. I've turned the power off here so it's not moving so that we can actually look and I'll turn the power on and show you. So this was the conclusion that I had come up with which works pretty damn well. So what you've got right here is you've got a little split which splits that one belt into two belts and then what we're doing with these two belts is we're testing if there's enough material on this single belt to fully supply the next belt. So is there enough material coming through on these two that can go through here and when it doesn't have enough material or when there's too much material uh, what we do uh, so when there's too much material on these two, it means that this is backed up and this should open up and allow material to flow through. So then what we do is we have this one greater than 12. The reason it's greater than 12 is because you can have it, if you have it less than that, you can get to a point where there are too many items that are waiting in this and splitting through and it doesn't quite work perfectly if you've got it greater than 8. So I found it greater than 12 works well. And then for the shuffler, it's exact same thing. So it's essentially all the shuffler is, is one of these with the green wire connected like that. And then the two checking and that one stopping. The exact same thing as this, except up here. The only difference with down here is we've got a, a splitter in front to actually split it into two belts for it. And that's it, that's all you need to remember. What I like to do with the upper ones is make them greater than 8 so they've got a bit more leniency because you don't need it to be totally compact that's pushing down with these top two. You do for the bottom one because you want this bottom belt to be full but the top two you're not too bothered as long as it is pushing it down. So let's remove this even though it's, it's not really needed that I remove that. I just, for, uh, for cleanness sake, we'll remove that. We will have a look at, I've got a little 5 set up here and that way you can see exactly what's going on. This works all totally 100% vanilla. Let's turn it all on and we'll see all the belts slowly but surely emptying out. And would you look at that, we've got 4 belts of pretty much full throughput coming in. 4 belts emptying, 0 overflow, this would be the overflow absolutely nothing coming through here. So it works pretty much perfectly in my opinion. And look, absolutely no stutter on the belts at the back. Uh, the, fa the fact there's a lack of stutter may be because there's uh, a slight, like it's not a fully saturated line but I think it is and you're not seeing any stutter. But that is basically what I come up with um, through seeing bits and pieces and trial and error and there's a lot of other people who have come up with the who've pretty much reached the same conclusion as me that this is the perfect way to do it but we let a factorial dev in on it <laughs> to see what his thoughts were and Clonin came up with pretty much this this here is just um, the regular shuffler which isn't really needed uh, but what we'll do is I'll show you one, no, oh, we've, <laughs> we've got some biters attacking. I'll show you one belt coming in and basically what this does is instead of testing before it, it tests after 
which the previous one done, but what it does is it splits it into two and tests to see if this section is greater than eight. A belt can support eight, so this one is greater than eight. This is uh, both content read mode hold. So this sees if there's more than eight coming through, which if there's eight, then it's a perfectly moving belt. And I'll show you that here. So it's a perfectly moving belt and you see it flickers between seven and eight. But when the belt is full and it stops, it goes higher than eight and it lets the floodgate open. But then when the belt starts moving again, it takes a little second and we're back to eight. Or we're back to eight max. So that's how that one works. It does use an extra splitter over these because this is two splitters and that one's three and it's a bit extra space off the bus which I'm not a massive fan of so I think I'll be sticking to this because not only is everything very simple and samey but it works just as well and if it ain't broke don't fix it but I, I did like this I thought this is an ingenious way to test it to test whether or not the the lane was stopped um so what's that it's an extra an extra splitter, that's just an extra splitter and an extra piece of belt? Uh, what? Nope, just an extra splitter. And it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be an extra piece of belt because you're taking away a piece of belt obviously for the splitter. But uh, yeah, there's an, an extra splitter and that's it. So yeah, that's a nice way to do it. The, the dev way, I prefer this way because it's all even, like everything's the exact same except the one extra splitter. So regardless of what size of belt you need, uh, you have rather, all you really need is that blueprint. That's all you need and you can just like paste, 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 all the way down and then boom, extra splitter. And you can have a 4 belt, you can have an 8 belt, you can have a 30 belt, like whatever you like and it'll work just the same. Uh, whereas this takes a bit more remembering. <laughs> uh, but that's just me. Ah, right, I also have, that's right, I also have an honourable mention to show you guys, uh, basically one that I come up with, uh, I should, I should let that pile through there, uh, remove that one, and I shall show you my honourable mention, right, let's remove these, unfortunately it needs a lot of space, but it does work on an interesting concept, and a concept that isn't actually used, uh, within all of the rest of them. So if we shove a splitter here and go, oh shit. Yeah, I'm gonna have lots of stuff blown up. It's fine. I'm not saving. Uh, if we shove a splitter there and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. And read and pulse and done. And. Enable if everything is equal to zero and pulse all of these. So as you can see, while it's moving, let's get a let's get one of these. That noise is going to get really annoying. As it's moving, you see it's uh, flicking between six and four, blah, 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 as it pulses. And then if we were to... Uh, let's throw one of these down. Okay, so you see that, like, as it's moving, it's not letting anything go. If we stop it, instantly it starts letting things go. Because this is no longer receiving any pulses, so it allows it to go. And as soon as that starts moving again, it takes stuff away. The only difference is, it takes eight slots. Why? Because a tick. Uh, so... You basically need to know what the pulse mode does. Well, there you go. The signal is sent for only one tick when the item enters the belt. So as the item enters the belt, it sends it for a tick. But because there's so many items entering the belt, it sends it for loads of ticks. And you need eight to extend the tick length long enough to uh, shut that off. Because if you were to use only a couple, what you'll see is... Well, it's a fully laden belt, so it's, it's not as bad. But it's, there you go. You see it, like, it stutter steps it which means it's not doing its job, but if there's less items on the belt, it is much worse. So say I start taking, 
say we've only got half a belt coming through, then it's worse at its job. So, I don't know. Like, you need a, to have a higher degree of inaccuracy, you need it super long. Um, which was fun because I was wanting to, to test with the pulse read mode because the pulse read mode is one of the only ones that uh, actually changes depending on if an item's, an entity's moving or not. Uh, but unfortunately, because it's only one tick, it's very tough to do anything with that. And then you'd be looking into using combinators and then that just makes the entire thing super expensive. And you can't really use this on a bus because it'd be fucking huge. So this is the best that I've come up with. Here's what the Factorio devs done. You make up your own mind whether you want to use this one or that one or what's easier for you if you want to use it in your systems. But as always, I've been CJ. You've been awesome. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.